Hello everyone and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program 1.6 with Kerbalism. In this episode I have added in a new mod, Kerbal Arm Clock, so that we can keep track of some of our missions to far-flung locations and also contracts. Though interestingly, even though I set um, all contracts for alarm, um, yeah, I mean it should be gen auto-generating, auto-creating active alarms for all contracts. It hasn't done so for our only contract, which is to explore Duna here. And I don't know, maybe when we accept it, they'll be created. Uh, but we should also take a look at picking up some other technologies. And I really wanted to make sure we got uh, RCS thrusters. That seems important, at least, you know, for my future sanity. And so we're going to pick up that. And also, I want to be able to make proper stations and I, that means at least having the regular Clampatron. So I'm going to unlock this as well. So yeah, also the advanced nose cone is sort of nifty. But yeah, um, we still have a lot of other technologies, but once again, we're under 90. And aviation, you know, that's a sort of specialized thing. Uh, seems to be required for landing though. So you know what, let's pick it up. Uh, we'll probably want that, those, and especially the heat shields pretty soon. So yeah, anyway, we need some more science. Probably the science should come from Minmus if you want it quickly. The Duna windows in one year and 18 days, so we can't send anything too soon. Uh, we've got something to build a new orbital station around Minmus, but it requires 4,000 units of liquid fuel, 5,000 units of electric charge, and nine Kerbals. So let me take a look at whether this is feasible or not before picking it up. I mean, feasible with a small enough rocket. You know, you build a big enough rocket, you can do it. But I wanted something a little bit more confined. Okay, so if I don't want to assemble it piece by piece, this is basically what I come up with. We might not have enough Delta V actually to get it over to Minmus orbit, but um, we, we really only have these little batteries and uh, these little batteries here. And so if we want 5,000 electric charge, we have to put a whole lot of these. And then uh, the 4,000 liquid fuel is uh, what we've got here. And there's also a center one that everything's attached to. And uh, we needed fuel for making orbit. And so we've got some of that. And Terrier's tilted out. Uh, I mean, of course, it's not as efficient, but stylish. Um, and also we have some locked liquid fuel up here to make up the difference because uh, we needed 4,000 and nine of these tanks is just 3,600. We got a little bit of margin for some reason. Uh, but uh, yeah, we could actually probably dump this amount. That's just acting as an adapter right now. A docking port up there, of course. We've got some more batteries, the core. Uh, we would still need a uh, one Kerbal mission to dock to it to complete nine Kerbals worth of space. As far as life support's concerned, uh, we have space for life support, but we don't necessarily have it all filled. And we do have a water... Okay, so we've got four of these little external ELS, ECLSS pods. And uh, these two at the top are configured for humidity and water recycling. And then the two that are at the bottom here are humidity and scrubbers. Inside these pods, we have a scrubber, humidity, also treadmill. And... Uh, uh, here scrubber pressure and all and if we take a look here the situation is nitrogen uh, these are nitrogen containers these are oxygen containers nitrogen one year 71 days for four Kerbals and um, no hydrogen no ammonia food about a year for four Kerbals water close enough to a year for four Kerbals oxygen somewhat less than a year for four Kerbals and uh, that's how that is Scrubbing, humidity, and pressurization is good. And in terms of stress, uh, they say it's cramped. Um, modest comfort, duration two years. Uh, if we take out, if we just have one Kerbal, um, they're not very comfortable because they don't have com any companions, but uh, their living space is good. Um, they can stay there for six years, but it's best to have some other Kerbal so that the comfort is moderate and but then the living space is poor. So we're gonna have to add more modules at some point. But
but uh, yep, that is the situation. We're of course not going to launch it with Kerbals in, that would be pushing it. And we're not going to launch it at all because our launch pad is still limiting us to 140 tons. So I'm going to contemplate whether I want to do this all at one launch or assemble it somehow. We could wait for more battery technology because then we won't have so many parts and uh, that might be a good thing. Could also wait for better tanks for the oxygen because, you know, I mean, we have quite a few of these and we could cut down on parts like that. Solar panels are also a thing. These are the only solar, solar panels we have right now. So we might want better ones of those before launching a station. Let's see how long the contract gives us. Mm, it gives us 16 years, so we'll pick it up. We'll pick it up. It's clear that eventually... Oh, I forgot the antenna. Watch out. Um, all right, let me quickly slap the antenna and then maybe prepare a Minmus mission to get more science. But we should upgrade the launch pad, I think. Let's fund that first. It goes straight to unlimited, so... No problems there. Okay, we're gonna send Valentina over to Minmus in order to grab some science. Once again, MechJeb decided to hide all my windows. Um, it remembers how I configured them, it just wanted to hide them. All right, everything is a go, and well, let me use Smart ESS to better handle the rocket. All right, and launch. Oh, I had the clamps separate from the engine ignition, that's fine. That's how it's done in Realism Overhaul, but I'm not used to it here. I never used the uh, Ascent Guidance thing, but if I try and control the rocket by hand, I, I don't have the steadiest hand ever, so it's better for me to click a number and for me to actually try and steer it by hand. I think of it as sort of a fly-by-wire system. I've been excessively calm with the rocket here to turn it quicker. Okay, booster set. And terrier. That's fine. All right, let's transfer over to Minmus. Okay, we have our Minmus transfer burn. Uh, we are going to do a mid-course adjustment to make sure that we get there quickly rather than taking too much time. I forgot to slap on the extra batteries. So we're a little bit tight on the electric charge. We'll have to watch out for that and pay attention to where the sun is going to be. For now, it'll be fine. Well, here we seem to be passing on the nighttime side of uh, Minmus. I don't want that. So let's go over to this side instead. Of course, we'll be on the nighttime side for some... Well, actually, we could directly land and skip that. Uh, it's possible. Radiation again. 12%. I don't know. I think maybe the radiation is cumulative. I don't know if they really... If it clears up or not for a particular Kerbal. I don't know. I don't think uh, Valentina would already be at 12% just from this sort, uh, sortie, if you will. This mission. Um... Though I don't know how long it takes for the radiation to clear up out of the system, if it does. So maybe it's just because we've been doing these missions pretty quickly. Then again, we did that whole Mars mission thing. That was, that took a while to time warp through all that. So, I don't know. Seems like the radiation is more persistent per Kerbal. We might want to shield our missions. Okay, correction burn. And our approach is a little bit tight, but otherwise it's going to uh, otherwise it is going according to plan. Stress is accumulating. So is radiation that went up to 13% now. I expect that um, we'll be bringing Valentina back before the stress gets to be an issue, but We'll keep a continuing eye on that radiation on subsequent missions. I did put shielding on our tentative Minmus station. Now, is there a landing spot we could just go straight into a landing to? We can see our previous flag there. 
I suppose Valentina could take the highlands or something like this patch here. Let's focus on Minmus. We're gonna be dumping a bunch of fuel here. What's that skating by? Minmus probe. Minmus po probe. I mean, it's such a small, small universe, really. We're a little bit early. Okay, that should do the trick. If the true altitude is less than that out... I mean, oh, now it's changed. Okay. Still says lowlands, though. Well, anyway, that's a new biome. I thought this hill would be something higher, but apparently not. There was definitely sort of a canyon we were going over, though. That seemed like lower than the... What you call it? Altitude above quote-unquote sea level. Okay, let's dump this stage. There was a little poof that went off to the side for some reason. Uh, let's sidestep the stage. Everything looking good. 6% stress. Cramped, obviously. Comfort, none. Sort of a given. Nope, hovering again. Nope, nope. Down we go. All right, our baguette pod has landed. Let's get crew port. Keep. Looks like we got the radiation and, well, not the temperature. We could transmit the temperature now. Eh, it's fine. We took the surface sample from the pod, but we should plant a flag just to make sure that we know we've been here. Okay, well, at the lowlands, mm, maybe we can hop. <laughs> yeah, she actually hopped when I said hop. Uh, somewhere nearby? Well, yeah, I mean, since, we, we're, since we're here and we have Delta V, suppose so. Okay, board. Right, so where should we go to next? Um, how about that area there? Yet another flat. I don't like bumpy. I mean, it's Minmus, so bumpy areas. We'll just fly over and if uh, we see another biome, we'll go for it. So uh, about 315 degrees we will do the trick. Oh, Midlands. Well, we can stop here. We'll get Midlands. Okay, we are at the Midlands. Uh, crew report. Keep. Radiation is not new because it's not surface biome dependent. Log temperature. Keep. All right, EVA. Ooh, rocked the pod a bit. EV report, keep. Surface sample, keep. Board, and let's plant that flag. Okay, so Val at the Midlands. And uh, part two of the trilogy. We'll head to one more biome. Okay, so we'll head to the flats and then call it a mission. New slopes. Well, we'll wait for some other time for slopes. Slopes aren't too hard. I mean, they're just a bit slow. Oh, she could walk over to a slope. Maybe if we can get closer to one of the edges. Eh. I'm a little bit worried. I've I've killed Val before during an EVA because of ragdoll physics. Uh, actually, the fuel is a bit tighter than I thought. I'm afraid I've been taking too many luxuries with our fuel. 
MK EVA for me. And inspection. Hmm. Interesting. EVA report. Keep. Uh, surface sample. Keep. Board. We do have enough food, water, and oxygen for a rescue mission if necessary. Planet flag. Val at the lesser flats. So, can you get me home? It's a good question. I'm not going to try for slopes. Well, actually, you know what? Maybe that, that would result in monopropellant usage, which would lighten us up. So I take it back. Well, I mean, am I going to know when I get to a slope? No, don't put your jetpack stuff away. Ah, uh, there you go. Okay, yeah, 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 okay, that's worrisome. All right. Mm, that's just not. Okay. Yeah, I think I should just focus on getting her back home. Okay, up we go. That should be good enough. It's pretty tight, but it should be good enough. All right, let's see how we get home. Uh, that apoapsis doesn't look too far beyond Mimis's orbit, so that should be as gentle as it's going to get. Going to go for 26.5 kilometers. Should do the trick. All right, so we do have enough fuel. We do want to do this accurately. Okay, ignition. Plenty of other biomes to deal with on Minmus. Much more science to get. And perhaps a space station will facilitate that. Okay, there we go. Planned periapsis. And we're on the way back. Now, just electric charge to be concerned about. We're on the nighttime side of Minmus here. But we're going pretty fast, so. Okay, coming in. Oh, nighttime side, great. Not because we're gonna run out of power, but because we're gonna be in the dark and it's not as not as uh, visually appealing. Okay. Separating off the service module or lander stage or whatever you want to call it. it does so many things. All right, coming back. Lots of science. How many gigabytes? I not say like that. Um, 3.89 gigabytes. Could have carried Alyssa Blader. I forgot to take some off. I just loaded the mission and just went with it. Didn't change it at all. Splash down and recover. Recover, recover. 438, very good. And six XP gained for Valentina. Let's see what we can do here, specifically to make our station a little bit better. I mean, we could add a cupola, but that's just adding cost, really. Hmm. Solar panels, I think, is, is the main thing. I like better ones. I like really better ones, but that takes a while, doesn't it? Oh, fuel cell array. Um, Gigantor is here. Yeah, that'd take all our science to get that, and we do want a few other things. Oh, what is the batteries? Yeah, bigger batteries is there too. Hmm. That make carrying the extra electric charge a lot easier in terms of part count. But I sort of ooh precision propulsion. Well, those engines aren't quite as good as the ant engine and the spark. I could contemplate heavy rocketry, though. That would simplify our boosters. Use a skipper engine instead of all those other engines. It'll probably be cheaper. Well, certainly advanced electrics. And we've got this. Breakthrough, we now have access to monoprop fuel cells. Not prop oxygen fuel cells. Very good. Mm, 
but now I have to make a choice between the nice solar panels and uh, batteries and thermal control systems. I suppose Kerbalism probably requires radiators somehow. I don't know exactly how. But will my station overheat? I don't even know. It doesn't say anything in the dialogue, does it? I should check. Yeah, I wish I'd gathered just a little bit more science. Got these boosters now. We could replace the other boosters if we take this technology. Maybe we can create a separate solar cell array thing. We only need, like, no, oh, we still need like 12 of these plus one of the smaller batteries in order to make 5,000 electric charge. But we can make do. It's better than all the ones that we're carrying right now. Where are the separatrons? I'm sort of missing them. I, I've got, I'm gonna have some big boosters. They're all the way out here in precision propulsion. Well, okay, I think that settles it. Uh, we'll pass on the big solar panels for now. We'll get the heavy rock tree and precision propulsion so we can get the separatrons to separate those boosters. Otherwise, we might be in big trouble. All right, and we'll have to do some other science to get the high power electrics. But I think I want to do that orbital station around Mimis now. Okay, so I reworked this a little bit. We've got skippers on the boosters now, and I've got separatrons. We are using the kickbacks, four of them. And so I also decided to put a lander can on here so that we can... Uh, did I even pick... I picked up the contract, right? Okay, so uh, we've got an antenna docking port can generate power. It supports nine Kerbals, 4,000... Well, you know, of course, we're going to be using liquid fuel, so it doesn't quite count, but 5,000 units of electric charge. You see, we've got 5,750. So let's see what happens. This is dicey, very expensive, obviously. And um, the margins on the Delta V are pretty tight, too. Um, I'm expecting these three stages for the launch. And um, then we've got, you know, 900 for a transfer and then just a little bit to capture, though I can use some of the, I filled up some oxidizer here. So if we unlock these, uh, we've got 1,149, so that should be enough to capture, but we'll see. All right, so let's get smart ASS out. And this gargantuan thing, throttle up, SAS is on, and launch. Just a 1.26 thrust to weight ratio at the start here. I did not put separatrons on the kickbacks. We we're hoping that those separate cleanly. We'll try to be pro pointing directly prograde when we separate the kickbacks. The problem is we're going to be separating them right when we're going through the speed of sound and max Q and everything. Okay, set. Off. Oh, 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 oh. I, I don't know what just happened, but I think we're okay. Did we actually lose any engines? I think we lost two. We lost two on the core. Ooh. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. I know your thrust is imbalanced, but please do the right thing. Oh, great, we're gonna lose the skippers. I don't know about our thrust weight ratio when we dump them. Now that we lost two engines. Well, at least they went off barely, like, pr close to one, but not quite. Well, that nose cone is doing some nice heat shielding work, it looks like. It's glowing red. I'm looking to drop that off. Uh, we'll be coasting to WAP WAPSIS and we'll drop it off then. Okay, that should be good enough. All right, um, how about uh, tilting slightly off heading? And as our momentum is sort of rotating us this way, if we decouple? Oh, well, heck, it's gonna go like that. Fine, fine. Uh, <laughs> if it's gonna be able to push off like that, that's fine by me. Now we need to get back to a heading of 90, please, before we need to burn. Okay, finalizing orbit. 
It looks like we'll be able to use this stage a bit for a transfer, and that suits me. We could try and deorbit it, but I don't think our fuel mar margins are such that I want to try that. I would like to use what fuel I have. Mm, going a little bit awry here, but that's good enough. Alright, so let's make sure to activate these antennae. So if I crew this time, the off-plane transfer is feasible, and actually it probably would have been okay even with crew. It's only a 10-day trip over there. You can see the gap between us and Minmus. Um, we should target Minmus. I need to get going though. So, ignition. We're getting half of the burn delta V from these engines, so we can start the burn pretty close to the maneuver node. That's good. This is going to be a big bunch of space junk, though. That's bad. Okay, separation. And terriers. These are a little bit calmer. Uh, looks like uh, we're a little bit imbalanced. I'm not too sure what exactly is causing it, but hopefully they can hold out. I thought about tossing in Barris for that extra bit of annoyance. Uh, Barris is like sort of like Kerbal Construction Time and Dang It put together in a way. Um, in other words, it's got part failures, it's got uh, delayed construction, construction takes time. Um, but I'm concerned that since Kerbalism also has part failures, maybe they'll conflict, so I don't know. If somebody has some information about how Kerbalism and Barris work together or not. Maybe I have to turn off the part failures in Kerbalism. It might be too much, but Barris is another mod that I wanted to at least learn about, you know. Ooh, that's, well, we're gonna need an off, um, a mid-course adjustment. Okay, so, mid-course. This looks like a serious spacecraft right here. This this has all sorts of greebling going on and this has the business. Communication is good. Should be with those antennae. Make sure at periapsis we still have communication. We will. That's good. Oh, I guess I didn't put shielding on that one lander can at the top. It's quite a thing. 52 tons right now. And we can expand. We've got plenty of docking ports. Trying to keep the orbit in check a bit by pitching down. There we go. A 20 by 20 orbit. More or less. Are we satisfied? Maintain stability for 10 seconds, it says. And we are satisfied. All right. And there's, there's a substantial station around here. We've got supplies on it. We've got room for more supplies. Uh, we've got water recycler. We've got all sorts of things. Everything is running. Electric charge is replenishing. We've got plenty of batteries. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, it's not really pointed at the sun, but that's fine for now. All right. So this is huge. This is huge. So with this, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.